Hello friends, welcome to a new topic today. In this chapter, we are going to learn about the nasal polyps. Okay, in the nasal polyp, first, uh, what is nasal polyp? Nasal polyp is a uh, growth, pedunculated mass which is seen in the nose and this is non-neoplastic -peden non pedunculated mass and it is sometimes cellular. This nasal polyp is covered by normal epithelium which is ciliated columnar epithelium. This is soft, fleshy and pale and insensitive to pain and this nasal polyp does not shrink with uh, on usage of vasoconstrictors. Nasal polyp does not shrink on usage of vasoconstrictors and it is insensitive to pain. Then it does not bleed on touch. It is insensitive to probing. This nasal polyp never presents has epistaxis. Now there are two types of nasal polyps. One we have in an ethmoidal polyp. Second we have anthrocoanal or chilean polyp. So first we will learn about ethmoidal polyp. So this is the ethmoidal polyp. Ethmoidal polyp is most commonly seen in 30 to 60 years of age. It is most common in males more than females. It is most commonly seen in ethmoidal sinus as the name says it is most commonly seen in ethmoidal sinus more than middle turbinate. Here the main etiological future is the presence of allergy. On examination you see multiple smooth it is most commonly bilateral because it is allergy and you see multiple smooth glistening sessile or pedunculated polyp. This polyp are lined by ciliated epithelium initially but as the trauma increases it will go into squamous metaplasia and as it increases it will go into squamous metaplasia this squamous metaplasia is important and because of this multiple grape like you know glistening polyps which are seen in the nose it can cause bilateral because they are present bilaterally it leads to bilateral nasal blockade and there is partial or complete loss of smell there is pain over the nasal bridge that is forehead or cheek this because of this there is also post nasal drip because of the obstruction you will see post nasal drip because of the presence of these uh, uh, pedunculated um, polyps there is broadening of nose this broadening of nose will manifest has frog face deformity so one can see this has frog frog face deformity then on anterior rhinoscopy you can see multiple glistening small bluish gray grape like papules which are insensitive to touch and do not bleed the investigation that you can do here is x-ray pns but that is not the investigation of choice investigation of choice is non-contrast ct of nose and paranasal sinuses then on surgical treatment the treatment here you can also do treatment surgical treatment here the surgical treatment is the treatment of choice in this there are many types of treatment available surgically so we have uh, first drugs which we start is on they will have we will have to start the patient on intranasal corticosteroids then we can also do simple polypectomy for one or two polyps we can also do intranasal ethmoidectomy if there is multiple sessile polyps if there is, and we can also do extranasal ethmoidectomy okay so and there is one more surgery called as Haworth incision see in simple polypectomy this is generally done if there is one or two polyps then you can do simple polypectomy intranasal polypectomy is done if there is multiple sessile polyp then you do this intranasal polypectomy if there is a orbital complication also you can do this intranasal polypectomy this intranasal polypectomy is done in blind it is a blind procedure obviously because it is done from the nose and it is done whenever there is multiple sessile polyps or at and orbital complications then extranasal polypectomy it is mainly done whenever there is recurrence this is mainly done whenever there is recurrence one important thing is recurrence even after intranasal discharge then you will do this extranasal ethmoidectomy and the, for this extranasal ethmoidectomy you give an incision called as Haworth incision which is beginning from the medial to the inner canthus of the eye 
this havoc incision begins from medial to inner canthus of the eye so this is the picture of ethmoidal polyp which you can see okay with multiple small glistening polyps and this is the lynch havoc incision which is given on the medial to the inner canthus of eye okay so this is about uh, ethmoidal polyps the next then where there is one more surgery there are some more surgeries which are also available they are horgan's trans antral ethmoidectomy can also be done this horgan's Hor trans antral ethmoidectomy is done if these polypoidal changes are seen in maxillary antrum then we can do this horgan trans antral ethmoidectomy nowadays the surgery which is done is endoscopic sinus surgery or functional endoscopic sinus surgery is the main surgery which is done and here we use 0 to 30 degree sinoscope for removal of the small polyps then in the medical treatment we can give intranasal corticosteroids then th then the next drug then the next uh, type of polyp is anthro anthrocoanal polyp this anthrocoanal polyp is also called as kilian polyp this anthrocoanal polyp is most commonly seen in children and young adults and it is most common in males for more than females then it is most commonly seen in maxillary antrum in the maxillary antrum it is most common in floor and medial wall of the maxillary antrum here the etiology in the ethmoidal polyp the etiology is mainly mainly allergic etiology whereas in anthrocoanal polyp the etiology is mainly infections this anthrocoanal polyp shows a unilateral pale white translucent mass it shows unilateral pale white translucent mass and here uh, this anthrocoanal polyp has three parts one it has the antral part second it has the coanal part third it has the nasal part antral part which is seen outside see if this is the uh, thing this is the nasal part which is in the nasa okay one inside the maxillary antrum that is inside the maxillary antrum we have the antral part this is the nasal part and this is present in the posterior coena so this is coenal part so this is the uh, anthrocoenal polyp which you see so initially this uh, you see nasal blockade this is most commonly unilateral so the blockade is unilaterally and it mostly grows posteriorly and once it goes posteriorly it will obstruct in it will go into the nasopharynx and once it grows into the nasopharynx in the nasopharynx it it forms a bigger mass so as a result it obstructs both anterior and posterior coena and thus it leads to bilateral obstruction so initially it is unilateral and later it leads to bilateral obstruction it is also associated with hyponasal voice and nasal discharge sometimes because of the blockade of endotracheal tube it forms conductive deafness this is the anti this is the anthrocoenal polyp this is the polyp which you can see okay which has pale surface and it is dumbbell shaped and in this picture you can see the anthrocoenal polyp here okay this is the anthrocoenal polyp this is involving the whole polyp sorry whole uh, nasal 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 cavity okay then then if you see on anterior rhinoscopy you cannot see anything okay it is only visible on the posterior rhinoscopy on the posterior rhinoscopy you see smooth white spherical mass in the coena in the posterior rhinoscopy you see smooth white spherical mass in the coena obviously just like anterior sorry it is just like uh, ethmoidal polyp even here the investigation of choice is non contrast ct of nose and paranasal sinuses here in this anthrocoenal polyp there is no role in the medical role the treatment of choice is surgery and in this we have three different surgeries available one intranasal polypectomy and then caldwell look operation and functional endoscopic sinus surgery intranasal polypectomy is indicated in young patients with incomplete dentition it is indicated in young patients with incomplete dentition caldwell look operation is done if there is recurrence and if the age of the person is more than 
seventeen years and if there is recurrence then you can do caldwell look operation nowadays functional endoscopic sinus surgery is most commonly done then then if you see some miscellaneous points there is something called as samter's triad so this samter's triad has a triad which is it includes asthma anthrocyanal polyp and aspirin intolerance asthma anthrocyanal polyp and aspirin intolerance together we call it as samter's triad and if there is a polyp in the beginning if there is a polyp the polyp should be red fleshy friable and granular sub granular substance so sometimes if this polyp occurs in older patients remember remember it is an increased chances of malignancy because this polyps have predisposition of malignancy they can be confused with malignancy so all the polyps should be subjected to histor histology so if polyp like substance is present in old age then suspect malignancy if the similar polyp like structure is present in a child then suspect glioma or encephalocele if it is presented in a child suspect glioma encephalocele or meningoencephalocele in this patients you will have to aspirate it you should not do biopsy you will have to always aspirate it on aspiration you will examine you will find the csf the fluid is found to be csf these are the two important differential diagnosis which you should keep in mind in older age you should think of malignancy in children you should always think of glioma encephalocele or meningoencephalocele then if there is not one nasal polyp but if there are multiple nasal polyp if any if in any case if you find multiple nasal polyp with a child always and always think of mucoviscidosis multiple nasal polyp in a child is predisposes to mucoviscidosis then if there is epistaxis and orbital symptoms along with polyp epistaxis orbital symptoms with polyp then rule out malignancy so this is about the polyps thank you guys for watching my lecture thank you